All right, so let's take a look at problem 319. So this asks the question, which of the numbers here, here, or here are divisible by 7? And since we know the definitions, we can do mathematics. Oh, wait, remember, don't watch this video. Remember, a main goal of our course is to develop your problem-solving ability, and you only ever have one opportunity to solve the problem. Now, some of you might wonder, well, you know, why aren't I just teaching you how to answer these questions? And the reality is, if I show you how to solve a problem, it's because I don't believe you are smart enough to figure it out on your own. You should really think about what that means. It means if I say, here are the steps that you need to answer this question, what I'm also saying is, I don't think you're smart enough to figure this out. On the other hand, if I give you a problem and ask you to solve it without telling you how to answer the question step by step, what it means is, I think you can figure this out. I think you are smart enough to figure these problems out on your own. So ideally, these videos, no one will ever watch them. Nobody watches them because they can figure them out. And my assumption that you can figure these questions out, that you can solve these problems, is the correct one. So. Hopefully, no one is watching these videos. So, again, hopefully, no one is actually watching this video, and I'm talking to the ether. Uh, but uh, let's see if we can answer this question. Well, we know the definitions, so we can do mathematics. If you don't know the definitions, you cannot do mathematics. You can push symbols around on paper, you can get the right answer, but you will never be doing mathematics. You have to know the definitions. I can't emphasize that enough. Now, in this case, the question involves, are these, which of these numbers are divisible by 7? So we go back to what it means to be divisible by a number. And by the definition, a number is divisible by 7 if we can write it as a product of 7 and whatever else there is. So let's take a look at this. So here, Q, our number, this is this horrible messy thing and the thing to notice here is that there's this last term here that tells us we have 25 factors of 7 so if you want to think about this this Q has a whole bunch of numbers multiplied together and the tail end of that product includes 25 factors of 7 so certainly associativity and commutativity of multiplication being true I can think about Q as being a product of 7 and a whole bunch of other things. So certainly, Q is going to be divisible by 7. What about the others? Well, the fundamental theorem of arithmetic guarantees that the prime factorization of a number is unique up to the order of the factors. So 7 is prime, and so I know that if the prime factorization of a number does not have a 7, then that prime, then the factorization of that number can never have 7 as a factor. If I don't have a 7, I can't get it in. Well, so that means I need to find the prime factorization of each number and see which ones have 7s and which ones don't. So let's take a look at n. So first off, n, 4 to the 30th, 25 to the 70th. There's no 7s there, but 4 and 25 aren't prime. So the fact that there are no 7s there doesn't mean anything because this is not the prime factorization. But I can find the prime factorization, that's 2 to the 60th, 5 to the 140th, and now 2 and 5 are primes. There's no 7 here, so I know that 7 is not divisible. 7 does not divide n. Well, what about m? Again, no 7s here. Well, this is not a 7. This is actually a 70. Uh, but again, 30 and 70 aren't prime numbers, so I can find the prime factorization. And, well, I have a bunch of 7s here. This is 7 to the power 25. There's 25 factors of 7, so there's lots of 7s, so 7 does divide m. And you should check the others on your own. 